So what did you think? Let's rank this film on the K-Jometer. All right, we'll start with Vince arbitrarily for the rest of time. <laughs> Vince, where do you place National Treasure from 2004 on your cage ometer? All right, so for film, I'll give it a seven. It's not a great film, but it's not a bad film. And I, I really enjoyed how much love went into the script. I mean, they were really, really good about including his uh, historical facts in there. You could definitely tell that uh, they took their time to do some research and make sure that they were um, making it as accurate as possible. I will um, say, sorry to interrupt, but I will say I that there are like 900 inaccuracies that I saw on uh, IMDb <laughs> goofs. So I do think that they they did the research, but a lot of things were like either they added something to it or they changed something to it. So I just didn't want to have to gonna, write all of those in because there's so many of good. them. So I, I was going to say, that being said, they definitely <laughs> did have to do the Hollywood thing where they added or, or subtracted stuff to make it fit the narrative that they're trying to tell. But you could tell overall they went and they did research and they tried, you know, they created this storyline with historical information that they, like everybody else, altered to fit the, the story they're telling, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, yeah, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. I think it's a fun, enjoyable movie. If you're a kid, it's, it's a lot of fun. As far as Nicolas Cage, you know, I'll, I'll give him a 7 too. I, I don't think, you know, he didn't knock this one out of the park it was no pig right it was it was him just playing this character this average character and doing it well he didn't go over the top like he tends to do he didn't mail it in like he did in doggy dog um <laughs> i feel like he he understood what the who the character was and and played to that character and played to his strengths to make it make it fit which was enjoyable it's nice to see him in those roles where you do forget that he's Nicolas Cage and you believe the character that he's playing mm -hmm. um, so yeah I'll give him a, I'll give him a seven on that as well it's, it's like I said it's like popcorn it's delicious but it's not gonna keep you it's not gonna keep you from starving to death yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right Nigel uh, where do you put National Treasure <laughs> on I, your cage really, ometer I really <laughs> don't like this movie <laughs> i haven't liked it i only ever watched it once and that was when it came out and i didn't like it back then either um so and i we've talked about it before i think throughout this but it's just it's fine like it's i give it a five out of ten because it's right there in the middle where it's like it's it's not exactly predictable but there's a lot of cliches in it and it's just it's a serviceable story and an adventure that keeps you you know sort of invested as you go through personally i wasn't that invested in it but it's a, <laughs> i mean there's enough of a mystery that you can kind of have fun with the history of it and and you know the adventure that they go on even though i don't think that the action's all that entertaining or interesting and it's just again it's like i really feel like this was a an old indiana jones script that they they modified <laughs> to uh bring it up to the modern day but then also just like ask some guy to be the main character instead of yeah. uh, an action hero um which, I mean, to be you know, fair, it's better than Crystal Skulls, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But that doesn't say a whole lot. <laughs> that doesn't uh, say much at all, no. But, I mean, it's funny because I feel like this is, you know, if, if Disney had had the rights to Indiana Jones back in 2004, they might have just made an Indiana Jones movie out of yeah. this um, and done something like this. Uh, but they made their own thing for it, which is fine if you're going to make you adapt your own thing it's not based on like a ride or a cartoon that they had they tried to make their own you know franchise out of it which is commendable but you know which, said which it's, has it's been a, very successful uh, yeah, between this movie yeah. and the next movie and then what whatever they're going to make next i feel like they've made over yeah. a billion so i it doesn't surprise me at all that it's a popular movie and that most the, the general audience consensus is fairly positive for it. It's just, it's not, there's not really anything you can really hate about the movie. I don't think there's anything you can really love about it, but uh, some people probably really do. And again, it's like you said, if you watched it when you were younger, uh, it's probably a lot more entertaining as a kid. Um, yeah. And then you'd have that nostalgia to go along with it. I was a teenager when it came out. So I was already, you know, I think a little beyond that <laughs> having those rose tinted goggles of a kid. But um, yeah. again, it's a movie that I think teenagers could also enjoy if they like, cause it's a, four quadrant film it's, it's you know it's it's perfectly average in my opinion which is why i gave it a five out of ten um as far as nicholas cage goes again i'll give him a five out of ten on it because i don't feel like he added anything to it in fact 
this movie was the first movie I can remember watching where I actively knew that it was Nicolas Cage in it. And I hated him so much in this movie <laughs> that I did not like Nicolas Cage basically until we started the show. <laughs> so for <laughs> over 15 years, I thought he was a terrible actor because he was just, he's so dull in this movie. I think he just, <laughs> he's, I don't think he has any like f- charm or charisma or really adds anything to the character. Um, like you said, there's one cagiest moment that he has when he's talking about getting their entrails burned and stuff. But other than that, I feel like it's just a guy. Like they just they could have had anybody, you know, be him. It could have been, um, uh, it could have been John Cusack. Who knows? <laughs> it could have been William Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, William Robbins. So. Uh, from what we know of Nicolas Cage, a lot of that I think is dependent on the director. Um, yeah, which we, I feel like I've like. said this a bunch of times <laughs> on the show, but maybe he didn't have anything to work with with it. I just feel like he, they could have done something more with Nicolas Cage with this character and made it a little bit more punchy and a little little more memorable. But to me, he's just completely dull and and unlikable in a lot of ways. Like especially when he's <laughs> being an asshole to Abigail. <laughs> After he just like risked her life and stole the thing that she cares about and stuff. He's just like telling her to shut up because she's annoying. And, <laughs> uh, you know, he's just, again, a middle of the road performance to me. It's not terrible. Uh, I used to think it was terrible when I was younger. I don't think it's terrible anymore. I think it's just. And then you saw not, Doggy Dog. <laughs> yeah. And I, was, I just think it's not memorable. And, you know, it's just sort of there. So. Do you, do you guys think that by watching some of the movies that we've watched, it's actually made you appreciate other movies <laughs> that yes. you used to think I, were I, bad? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I think I talked to you guys about this, but I did an MCU uh, <laughs> watch from in chronological order, mm-hmm. and uh, it made me it made me appreciate some of the movies I disliked originally <laughs> much much more. Like I wasn't so hard on Captain Marvel or even the first Captain America. I hated that one after I first saw it. I, th- I thought it was just not very good. Thor, uh, with the Thor movie, the first two Thor movies, uh, yeah. Iron Man three. Like oh god, Iron Man three was one of the worst movies I'd ever seen in my life. But now going back and watching them after doing the show, it's like okay, these aren't that bad. <laughs> I seen some true <laughs> shit films. Thanks yeah. to this podcast. <laughs> I always kind of contended that like even the worst MCU movie, which, uh, you know, up and I I don't know, even potentially now was Dark World. And um, even that one was like, it's it's a decent movie. It's not great. It's not a decent film. Not amazing, but it's definitely not the worst movie. I mean, I've watched terrible (laughs) movies on on purpose my whole life. I have a signed picture from Tommy Wiseau. Uh, autograph <laughs> to me in my hallway. Yeah. So you, that if that tells you anything about my love of terrible cinema, um, yeah. Well, hi Patrick. So, yeah, yeah. It says I love. Also the love side, is though, blind. Like we, <laughs> I think also from the flip side, we've watched really good movies through the course yes. of this. Yeah, so it's yeah. Like it's, and you know, taking a critical eye to film is not something I've done a lot of in my life, Ditto. and so. It's it's also lowered my threshold of, uh, or I guess raised the threshold of what a bad movie is. I guess lower whatever, lowered my tolerance for bad movies. I should say, yeah. <laughs> to the point where it's like, okay, we, even just doing the work of Nicolas Cage, I've seen some great directors um, show us what a really solid good movie can be. And when you you know have some other movie that's like, I don't know, fucking Red Notice on Netflix, it's just like <laughs> crappy, <laughs> you know cash in uninteresting dull boy movie um <laughs> it's just really made me appreciate better movies or good movies in a way that i hadn't yeah. thought about before all right i'll jump into mine um i did not hate this movie as much as as nigel um i also <laughs> i also gave it a seven i feel like it's you know it's i like i hadn't seen it in a long time like i mentioned and i i didn't hate it i i enjoyed it throughout i felt like it was entertaining enough to keep me captivated throughout the whole thing it wasn't like i was like oh my god this is the best movie i've seen it forever it's just kind of like yeah it was good it's all right you know um even the second time around when i was doing the breakdown and i was like you know painstakingly going through it a lot of times when i'm watching back these films when i'm writing those breakdowns i cannot wait to be done with it and this movie was kind of like eh, it's all right it's entertaining enough to like keep me going and and writing my stupid jokes along the way and um <laughs> i feel like you know the action felt forced in some spots for sure yeah. it, you know it's like it's not a perfect movie 
it's I feel uh, like this movie would have been fine if there was not a single action sequence. Yeah, totally. It would have been the exact yeah. same movie. Didn't even you know? need it. I just felt like it had to be there because it was a Bruckheimer film. It was a right. block, yeah. uh, summer style blockbuster, even though this came out in like mm-hmm. November or whatever. But <clears throat> um, I felt like it was um, – it's a fun movie. Riley doesn't strike me – you know, I, I don't hate him as much as a lot of critics did. Um, a lot of critics just ripped that character apart. Um, but I thought he was genuinely funny in a lot of spots and like, like when he's in the back of the car and he's, he's like, are we there yet? This car smells weird. Yeah. (laughs) Like (laughs) I I found him entertaining (laughs) throughout the whole thing until the very end. That's when I really hated him was like during that final sequence where he's, you know, it's just like okay we get it all right just move on which, which all right is, which yeah. is weird because that that was a reshoot like they they had to do that in reshoots. yeah there was a, and, a uh, an alternate ending yeah i don't yeah. know if you're going to talk about that but i wasn't going to go into the alternate ending but part of just the fact that they you know they reshot that particular scene and a lot of it had to do with the fact that they he t- like audiences loved him like he's a fan favorite um a lot of people that i talked to about this film they're, Riley you know, he's is one of their favorite parts. Yeah, <laughs> they really enjoy like just how kind of kooky. General crazy. audiences, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> but it was like back, you know, it was back in the time when those and... characters, those kooky characters, played yeah. really well, right? Yeah. But uh, but yeah, like so, like this, they reshot this and they they went back and they put more of his scenes in because he originally had a much smaller part in the in the film, and because he tested so so well in the early screenings, they went back and put more of him in and punched up his jokes and stuff. Um, <laughs> during the reshoots uh, yeah i just thought that was a weird tone though to reshoot it and have him come off as this unlikable kind of piece of shit and i was like <laughs> you got all this money like shouldn't you be happy like I, you know i think they were just dude. playing up the sarcasm at the end i think it was still in character for him like, yeah he's really only ever been after the money in the whole thing he just hasn't been an evil douchebag about it like Ian was <laughs> he wasn't trying to murder yeah, people true, for it true yeah because even at the start they're like when he finds the pipe he's like was that a billion dollar pipe or whatever? Mm-hmm. Like, is it a million dollar True. pipe? Like, is that worth anything? I don't know. I guess for me, it just kind of took, I don't know. The tone just kind of hit, like shifted weird to the point where I was yeah. like, oh, I don't remember him being this douchey at the end of the film. <laughs> the original I I ending. I the most at the end because he was like, you know, <laughs> oh yeah, everything turned out great for you. You got a freaking mansion and, you know, the hot chick or whatever. And, and I only got know, $50 million. Dollars. <laughs> yeah. You screwed us out of billion dollars <laughs> just because you're a good guy or whatever but yeah. you're still happy you know yeah that like was his crappy car and this Ferrari. crappy wig <laughs> <laughs> he's wearing a sport jacket at the end you know so you know he's rich you know he's very <laughs> unimpressed with the fact that, that they jacket. have private planes to everywhere that they, they're going yeah. and stuff yeah yeah um what was i gonna say oh the alternate ending the original ending didn't test very well is they went back into the National Archives and they look at the Declaration of Independence and then they say something about um, uh, some other treasure thing that they could go after. And and he and Riley and Abigail decide to go off on their next big adventure. And, and the audience thought, okay, well, they're obviously setting up a sequel. And they were like, we didn't, we definitely didn't mean to set up a sequel and we weren't planning on doing a sequel until the movie did so well. So yeah. they, they just felt like it ended on kind of a a down note um because people were like oh here comes the next money grab yeah national treasure 2 which they eventually did do <laughs> true <laughs> but i don't yeah, know if i said it's kind I, of a nice upbeat note you know yeah they saved the the they got, gave the treasure back to the world and then they sort of had a happy ending and that's mm-hmm. it. a self-contained story and then he and abigail are gonna go s- slam in the go go smash in the uh the charles carroll house great grandfather's house (laughs) (laughs) i guess no it's not it's not related to him it was they're gonna go uh, smash in the stables (laughs) in the house that is where the stable boy grandfather worked at (laughs) was an indentured stable boy fantasy again (laughs) you would do something different i'm tired why is it always the stable boy (laughs) <laughs> um for cage i gave him a seven as well i didn't i didn't find him as boring as as nigel did i thought he was pretty charming charismatic and yeah. i um yeah. and the same thing that vince was saying like and that nigel said that took him out of it was like i've genuinely <laughs> forgot that it was nick cage again you know because he he just i don't know he's just a guy he's just a um 
I believed the character, you know, he, he turned into that guy, whoever uh, Ben mm-hmm. Gates really is, you know, this kind of um, in a weird way, kind of naive, um, so full of hope and so full of love for American history and just always looking over the uh, dark parts of American history, <laughs> just kind of yeah. <clears throat> looking at the positive, which I think this that was the whole idea of this movie. It was like, it's a love letter for the good parts of American history and yeah. Yeah. kind of ignoring the bad parts of American history. <laughs> the ideals versus the reality, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What, like, what America stands for. What America for should be. The idealized version. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I gave him a seven um, and I... You know, I thought he was charming. I thought he was uh, interesting and, and engaging throughout the whole thing. Um, unlike Nigel. Um, <laughs> and uh, I didn't have any kind of like preconceived, uh, you know, like this wasn't the first time I ever saw Nick Cage in anything. I'd seen lots and lots of Nick Cage. And like, <laughs> I feel like judging him on past performances, you know, this one was pretty, pretty good. It's just kind of, it's middle of the road, I guess. If you're going for a, a C, you know, seven, seven or so. Um, but, you know, I felt like it was good enough to warrant a, a seven and and uh, kind of pushed him over that edge a little bit of being not boring, not overly cagey at, at any given moment. Um, and I feel like we've kind of talked about this in the past, but that that caginess comes from directors holding him in check, you know, and mm-hmm. I feel like. Turtle Tob did a pretty good job with with guiding this character that that they were trying to portray along and not letting it go off the rails in any kind of way and keeping him very likable throughout, which is, you know, I feel like that's what Nick Cage does really, really well is like he can be zany and kooky. He can be crazy. He can be normal. He can be charming. He can be whatever you need him to be as long as you guide him properly. <laughs> So I felt like he he did a, a overall pretty great job throughout this movie. Not amazing, not terrible. Popcorn. He's popcorn. <laughs> He's fast food. Yeah, He's fast food. <laughs> yeah, just like in the Weatherman. <laughs> oh, touche. <laughs>